find the following indefinite integrals using trig substitutions. For our first one, indefinite integral of dx over radical 36 minus x squared. If you note, we already know how to do this one. When you clean that up and target the 36 to turn it into a 1, we're just going to be looking at an inverse sign. The point of the trig substitutions, it'll let us handle things which are a little bit more complicated than this. For instance, if there was an x squared in the top, and so on and so on. But we want to go through the procedure first with things we're familiar with. So, little list. If you're going to do a trig substitution, you have three cases you need to be aware of. The square root of a squared minus x squared. The substitution that we use is x equal to a sine theta. For square root of a squared plus x squared, the substitution we use is x equal to a tan theta. And for square root of x squared minus a squared, substitution is x equal to a secant theta. What's the point? Well, notice if I take our term for x and stick it in to our radical expression, you'll notice that both terms will have an a squared, which pulls out. And then what's left over is going to be a trig expression, which will collapse. You'll see this happen all the time in all the examples, so I'll just hold off till we get to there before I explain too much more. So let's take a look. I have dx over radical 36 minus x squared. Okay, my recipe for radical a squared minus x squared, here we have a equal to 6. So x is going to be equal to 6 sine theta. dx is equal to 6 cosine theta d theta. And you notice I don't have to do my little algebra to push the cosine to the other side. dx is going to come out nice just as it is. So I'll have on top 6 cosine theta d theta. In the bottom, 36 minus 36 sine squared theta. And notice I could pull a 36 out of the radical as a 6. What's left? It's going to be 1 minus sine squared theta. That's cosine squared theta. And that's going to be square rooted. So we'll have a cosine over a cosine. That goes away. The 6s go away. And we're just left with integral of d theta, which is theta plus a constant. Now, if I want to fix, okay, our problem wasn't given in terms of theta. It was given in terms of x. So note, okay, I have x equal to 6 sine theta. So the algebra here would be we push the 6 to the other side, like so. And then note, if I want to move the sine to the other side, that's the whole point of inverse sine. So if I want to get rid of theta, I just replace it with this. If you're doing a definite integral, recall that if you're going to use inverse sine, you have to be careful. Its range has to be between minus pi halves and pi halves. So we don't need to worry about that for this particular problem here, though. So notice, this is what you would get if we used our old rule for inverse sine on this thing. Let's try another one. Again, this is going to be one we could do using another method, but this way we'll be able to check at the end that the old method agrees with the new method. So I'm going to use x dx over 36 plus x squared. If I take a look at my checklist, this is looking like x equal to a tan theta. Note the radical sign, we can get rid of that for purposes of this, because this is just like this thing with a square on it. So really, we're targeting the expression on the inside. I have my a squared plus x squared there. Now, the rule says let x be equal to 6 tan theta, dx equals 6 secant squared theta d theta. And note, I don't have to push this to the other side. dx is right there. So let's see what we get. We have x is 6 tan theta, dx is 6 secant squared theta, d theta. I have 36, and if I square x, I get 36 tan squared theta. Note, on the top, I'm going to get 36. On the bottom, I can factor out a 36. So what I'm going to be left with is just going to be tan theta, secant squared theta, 1 plus tan squared theta. Note. I have the trig identity, which we get from cosine squared plus sine squared equal to 1. Dividing through by cosine squared on both sides of that gives me 1 plus tan squared theta equal to secant squared theta. 
So what's in the bottom here, if I throw out the 36s, is just secant squared. The secant squareds cancel, and what we're left with now is just a tan theta. Okay, so we have indefinite integral tan theta d theta. Okay, the rule for this, well, you can do the gymnastics for this. At the end of the day, we're going to get natural log of absolute value of secant theta plus a constant. So that one we can look up for this. I've rederived this a few times. Now, theta, recall we have x equals 6 tan theta, so I can divide by 6, and then I want to get rid of the tangent, which I do by pushing to the other side with the inverse. So we're looking at natural log of secant tan inverse x over 6 absolute value plus a constant. Could leave it like that, but we can actually go all the way with this, so let's take a look. I'm going to set up a right triangle, and I want to let my inside be equal to theta. So I have tan inverse of x over 6 equals theta, tan theta equals x over 6, and note in terms of a right triangle, the tangent is equal to the opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to call that x, I'm going to call that 6. Hypotenuse then becomes square root of x squared plus 36. I want the secant though. Secant's 1 over cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Hypotenuse is x squared plus 36 square root. My adjacent is 6. So when I push the 6 to the inside, we're going to have, okay, that goes in as a 36. So that's going to be 1 plus x squared over 36 or x over 6 squared, whichever you like. So that's my answer. We're going to take the secant of theta, but that's secant of tan inverse x6. So that's going to be radical 1 plus x over 6 with a 2 on top, which is this guy here. So that's my answer. Let's see how we would do this the old-fashioned way. Okay, so you notice the function on the bottom has as its derivative 2x, which is more or less what we have on top. So this is looking like a u underneath u prime. Okay, that says natural log. So I sub out u equal to x squared plus 36. du is 2x dx, so dx is du over 2x. When I start pushing these terms through the integral, we're going to have x du over u 2x, or 1 half du over u. So the antiderivative 1 over u is going to be natural log absolute value of u. We have a half in front. I put in my u, which is going to be 36 plus x squared. Okay, we can move the half to the inside to get radical 36 plus x squared because the logarithm rule says constants in front, move to exponents on the inside, and then plus a constant. Now, looking at this, scratch your head and say, well, they are definitely not the same thing. And they're not, but that's okay. Let's take a look at what the difference is. If I take natural log of radical 36 plus x squared, Note, I could factor a 36 out of the inside, but to push it through the square root, it's going to come out as a 6. Now, we have a natural log of a product here, 6 times this radical. So if I have a product inside the natural log, I can break it apart as a sum of natural logs. So we have natural log of 6 plus natural log of radical 1 plus x squared over 36. And note, what's the difference between this one and this one? It's going to be the constant natural log of 6. So we're safe, okay, because if I have two antiderivatives for a function, they just have to differ by a constant. Now for a substitution with secant, this one won't be familiar, so we'll just follow our nose and then check the answer at the end. So I'll have dx over radical x squared minus 36. So our rule says, when I have the x squared minus 36, we're going to let x be equal to 6 that's our a squared, times secant theta. Okay, dx then is 6 secant theta tan theta d theta. So we're going to substitute things in, and then that's going to give me 6 secant theta tan theta d theta for dx. Then the bottom I have 6 secant squared theta minus 36. So we'll be able to factor a 36 out of that. Then that comes out as a 6, okay, like that. And then I just need to worry about what is secant squared theta minus 1. Let's take a look. If I have cosine squared plus sine squared equal to 1, 
I'm going to divide through by cosine squared. That gives me 1. Sine over cosine is just tangent, so it's 1 plus tangent squared. And then the other side, I have 1 divided by cosine squared. 1 over cosine is secant, so on this side, I have a secant squared. If I move the 1 to the other side, that's going to give me tan squared equals secant squared minus 1. So on the bottom, we're going to have secant squared minus 1 equal to tan squared, and then when I do the square root, that's going to crush that down to a tangent. So, what do we have here? The 6's go away, the tangents go away, and I'm left with a secant theta d theta. Now, again, like with the integral of tangent, this is something we've seen before, but you may need to look it up in a table. So, any derivative of secant theta is natural log secant theta plus tan theta plus c. Absolute value there. Okay, well our answer has to be an x, not theta, so we're going to have to go and figure out what secant theta and tan theta are. Well, secant theta is easy. That's just going to be push the 6 to the other side. Secant theta is x over 6. So I need a right triangle to figure out what the tangent is. Right, so I draw my right triangle. We have secant of theta is equal to x over 6. So note, secant is 1 over cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Flip it over. Secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So I'll call the hypotenuse x, the adjacent 6. And that's going to make my opposite radical x squared minus 36. So the tangent, which is the opposite over the adjacent, is radical x squared minus 36 over 6. So I can put that in for tangent giving me for an answer x over 6 plus radical x squared minus 36 over 6, absolute value, plus a constant. You could stop here, but why when we can make the answer a little bit nicer, especially for the check? So let's take a look. Well, note these 6s in the bottom, I can factor that out as a 1 sixth. This is now a product, which means for the natural log, I could turn it into a sum of natural logs on the outside. So we'll have a natural log of 1 sixth and a natural log of x plus radical x squared minus 36, absolute value, plus a constant. The great thing about this is natural log of 1 sixth is a number. I can punch that into a calculator, number comes out. So it's not really important in terms of the antiderivative. We could just let this thing here be absorbed into the constant. So I'm just going to call our new constant c prime, and then my antiderivative is the nice natural log absolute value of x plus radical x squared minus 36. Okay, I want to check. So note, this is a little bit easier to check since there's no sixes in the denominator. So the rule for natural log says, take your thing on the inside of the absolute value, put it under one, and then multiply by the derivative. Derivative of x is 1. This is x squared minus 36 quantity to the 1 half. The 1 half comes down. We subtract a 1 off of that. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. OK, note, I want to clean this up. The best way to clean this up is to multiply top and bottom by radical x squared minus 36. In the bottom, that's going to hit the x. And just that picks up that term. This is going to turn into x squared minus 36, but what we really should consider it as just this thing squared. Up in the top, the 1 picks up a radical x squared minus 36. Okay, the 2's go away. And now this thing, which has a plus a half on it, okay, if you throw away the radical sign, is going to hit this, and they're going to cancel out to a 1. So all we'll be left with is an x. In the bottom, I could factor out a radical x squared minus 36. And then that's just going to give me this thing over itself. They cancel, leaving me with 1 over x squared minus 36 radical. So the check works.